Hey guys, today's episode of The Read is brought to you by Curly Clips. With more than 1,000 reviews, Curly Clips is one of the most trusted hair extension brands for natural hair. They have clip-in extensions for our hair that add length and volume in just minutes. I love mine. It's so easy to switch up your style with Curly Clips. In fact, they just made a huge donation to the Plant Child Health and Development Fund, so shout out to them. Visit curlyclips.com and use offer code READ to save $15 on your next purchase. That's curlyclips.com with a K. Use offer code READ to save $15. Let them know we sent you and let's move on. This week's episode of The Read is also brought to you by Nature Box. Snack smarter with all of the amazing goodies from Nature Box. They have over 100 snacks to choose from, all made from high quality, simple ingredients, which means none of the bad junk. Artificial colors, flavors, sweeteners, none of all of that. Get three free snacks with your first order when you go to naturebox.com slash The Read. That's naturebox.com slash The Read for three Free snacks with your first order from Nature Box. Eat well and live better. Let's start the show. Tell me from Cletus. Come on, Cletus. Come on. Come on over here. <laughs> Ain't nothing but a short walk. Come I'm mad because I know exactly what it is. <laughs> you limping back. You walk over, but you're limping back. I sat over here prepared to not know it. Don't let the gray hair fool you. I ain't no easy win, nigga. <laughs> it's, that, it's that damn Medea movie. It's that one that you always quote because you do the voice. What is, is it? it? No, it's not. It's not. What? And is, I really, I was oh, like, you have it. Oh, never mind. Cletus. That's um the Eddie Murphy, the clumps. <laughs> never mind. Whew. I came back, though. I you came did. back. I'm fine. <laughs> I am oh. Okay. What is the, what is the, what is the old man that Tyler Perry plays, though, in that movie? What is his, his name? His name is, uh, I think his name is Joe. Oh, yeah, it is Joe. Okay. Well, but still, I knew it and I found it. So you got there eventually. Black male comedians dressing up as fat women and comedians. Okay, all right. It's a liberal usage of comedians. Hey guys, welcome. But still, two to weeks this in a row. Episode. I am. Uh, I'll be Mama Clump Hercules. Okay, I'll be Naomi Campbell. And this is the read back once again for some more nonsense. Mm-hmm. Trash and such as. I need to put my head on a pillow. Are you tired? I had a very long, illustrious weekend. Oh, yeah. I saw the video on Instagram. Uh, lots of weed, lots of leg exercises. Mm, yeah, that's what I guess you cook all that exercise, what I saw you doing. It was a great time, but I'm happy to be back. We're diving right back into some more... Uh, Readliciousness. Mm-mm. No, that's not it. That's not going to work. <laughs> um, but if you missed the video, go check out Instagram and see Kid Fury twerking <laughs> poolside in his little swim shorts. I mean, him and Asante. <laughs> that was the most three or five ass party in It looked like, ever. lit. And shout out to everybody who came out. So, all right. Fun. First up, Black Excellence this week. Meant to do this a while ago, actually. Um, the Wade quadruplets, quadruplets. Okay. These are four boys from Ohio who made headlines a few months ago, maybe, uh, because they got offers from Harvard, Yale, and a combined 59 colleges. Jesus, what? <laughs> Damn. Um. So, 59. these black brothers, you know, people were looking out for them and wondering which amazing school are you going to right, go to right. since you're allowed to go to all of them. Uh, what? So, they've decided, all four boys, to attend Yale together. Oh, as you do, you know. Uh, after Yale gave them what uh, I'm reading here on NBC News, they call it an extraordinary 
financial aid package, <sighs> which no other college could beat. Damn. <laughs> that must mean a stipend, too. They paying them to go to school. They said that they just enjoyed the environment. The school treated them like family, their parents and town, and everyone is really proud of them. That, it was that aid package. <laughs> I mean, girl, Duh. I mean, first of all, Yale. <laughs> Secondly. Right. It's not like some shit school. Oh, so you're covering... Got it. Oh, so you're coming cool. everything? Oh, and there's so, four of them? Awesome. Woo. We're going... Because, I mean, four Mm-mm. whole kids in college at, at the one same time. time. Right. Oh, and we're just, uh-uh. oh, mom, dad, we're going to Yale. <laughs> With what? <laughs> right. So, you're going to Yale without me? Mama cannot afford it. So congratulations to Nick, Zach, Nigel, and Aaron. Four, man. Four All four of them got accepted to 59 men, fucking schools. 59 Jesus. schools. Oh, well, have fun at Yale. Yeah, fuck it up. Fuck it up. Also, randomly, congratulations to uh, Gina Torres, who got a spinoff. Oh, yes. Mm. Uh, for that show, Suits. So she's going to have like her own. I can't wait. Her character, which is really the only reason I ever right, watched Right, that Suits anybody ever watched Suits. In the first place. So <laughs> I'm pretty sure she's the only reason anybody ever watched that show. And only it was the gifts on Tumblr that it. got me. Yep. Only reason I heard about it. Also, also watch she's it. disrespecting white men to their faces and telling them how much better than them she is. Yeah, let me cut this off. I, I'm here. <laughs> right. I'm on time. I don't need to hear anything else. So, now that we've got that on our hearts and on our souls and on our minds, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we can move into hot tops. Mm -hmm. First tops. That's in for the fall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the seasons change. You got to switch up what you're doing. So, the VMAs took place on Sunday. (laughs) God bless. Which... (laughs) Most of planet Earth didn't find out about until Sunday night. <laughs> oh, um, man. Interestingly enough, I had a conversation with my manager. I was saying to her, you know, I have a feeling that I wouldn't be surprised, I said, if I see a story right after the show that says this was the lowest ratings of any VMA right. in history. Right. Sure enough. Of course. There was a headline. I mean, for Katy just, Perry was the host. There you go. That's number one. Whoever looked at Katy Perry and thought, I bet that bitch is really great at telling jokes and entertaining a big crowd and keeping a show going and lively and like just, no, she fell flat the entire time that I watched. Because again, I, I looked at it for the hour it was on and MTV was very strategic. They put a lot of the sh- shit you would want to see first. Okay. And then I cut it immediately, like like eight fifty five. I turned it to Game of Thrones because, bitch, not only is it Game of Thrones, but it's the fucking season finale. No one has time for it, and it's shit. not gonna be back on for like a year and a half. What? Nobody is. No, we can watch Fifth Direction and all them people do their routines on DVR tomorrow. And what a finale! I have to. Okay, I nigga, mean, and it was everything. My <laughs> woo heavenly word. It was man. So the very end, I said, "Oh no, <laughs> rest in peace, Westeros." It's over. It's I mean, over. It's a wrap. Like they God have everything damn. at this point. Call Danny because she need to get her kids and come get this. Just too much. Like the Night King really came, just crashing Nigga. through the clouds with blue flames. I thought, oh, it's gonna take them forever to get over the wall. Uh, no, actually, no, no. <laughs> countdown from about twenty, sis. Tormund saw it. He said, oh, no, run. Go, so go. everybody needs to leave. Like, did anyone get out in time? Uh-uh. They fucked everything Who knows? up. And we what was know. delicious to me was that when one of the other White Walkers, like, when he had all his whites paws oh, real yeah. quick, and that, like, frigid... You know, stillness, whatever mm-hmm. that is that they do is right. always creepy. It is. And then here they come. So really what he was saying is, hold on, y'all. Give us just a yeah, second. Yeah, yeah. Stand back for a second while we take care of this little thing. <laughs> and then maybe 30 seconds. It's like, right. all right, let's keep going. I don't understand. Is it blue fire? Is it ice? What? I think it's blue fire. Okay. Damn. Which would make sense thinking... of how they got that ice wall to melt or break so quickly, I'm yeah, guessing. I guess so. Because it didn't look like, up close, it looked like blue flames. <sighs> Whatever it was, it was amazing. I Whatever said, I, it The was. budget on this show is insane. I know it is, but damn. That was fucking crazy. And then Littlefinger, my nigga. Thanks. I've been waiting for this for the longest. When that bitch was like, when she turned and was like, uh, Lord Baelish. And they, uh, the whole yes. room gagged. Everybody was like, like uh, 
Everybody just turned around. Like, and he really th- sat there like, I thought I got this bitch too. Yeah, it took him a second. She held that bastard to task did, for every did. lie told. And then basically was like, you know, I'm all about that action. Yeah. Uh, Aria. And Aria <laughs> didn't even waste no time. Did not hesitate. She was like, oh, thank you. Been Whoops. waiting. <laughs> so what is for lunch? I'm thinking veal. Oh, man. Aria done killed a lot of people. You, uh, this is, uh, this is like, oh, right. I don't even, it's just a matter of embarrassing you and then watching him go through the process and like process and like struggling and trying to be like, oh, Santa, I can explain if we go somewhere privately. Falling to his knees and crying and stuff like that. Like that was going to do something. Bitch. When old boy refused to escort him, he was like, oh, I demand you escort me to somewhere. Mama said, I think not. (laughs) We don't know you anymore. Bitch, you and I both know you'll be dying right here today. Right in this hall. We have all agreed that these two white women run this now. We don't know you. I mean, Jon Snow left and said my sister is in charge. So John who? I'm sorry. John Targaryen. Egger? (laughs) Egan Egan Targaryen. (laughs) Oh, God. Woo. Now, how is that going to go? I knew it. First of all, when I said John might as well go ahead and knock that down so everybody can get their, you know, nerves calmed. Everybody was like, oh, but, but, but incest. Bitch, we're watching Game of Thrones. Like, There's they're gonna incest. fuck yeah. down, period. So that... Mm. It was just gross, though, because it's like confirmation that they are absolutely aunt and nephew. Like your whole ass aunt. Yeah. Not distant. Great, no, right there. Nothing. Just your the daddy's same, yep. sister. Yeah. Your same daddy who died fucking with your sister and the Dothraki. Mm. Wasn't that crazy? In fact... Your sister's ex nigga. Oh, see, it's too much. This is too much. Killed your daddy. No, it was Didn't your. It? it was your. So it was Ned Stark's sister who married the Targaryen. Nigga. Right. Right. So that's. And let's just pause real quick oh, because. I'm confused. I loved how my nigga Sam gagged. Uh, Brand, brand real quick because he he's in this fucking wheelchair just like i'm the oracle i know I everything about everything i watch all of the fucking beyonce concerts in my <laughs> eyes bitch like i see what blue ivy has for breakfast like like he just know mm-hmm. he's so lit off of having like access to every piece of information and sam was like actually girl uh what happened was he's not a bastard because you know, my lady friend actually schooled me on some information that we have. You know what beats having eyes up in the sky? Pen and paper. Huh. <laughs> Books. That's right. Quill and parchment. Hello? So let's get it popping. <laughs> oh, man. That was that was everything. It was. Cersei is still uh, an icy, ridiculous. And Jamie done left her now. Now, I know he is going to be the one to off her. And you know what? At this point, I'm fine with it. I mean, it. he deserves. I'll t- he does deserve that. But Arya really deserves. She does. I mean, a couple of people. I mean, do. I still think if they can com- if they can get back, if Jamie can get to the rest of them niggas and Tyrion, c- yeah, if Tyrion can convince them that Jamie would like actually be down for the cause. I feel like Arya and Jamie could tag team and, and find a great way to murder Cersei together. Season finale, series finale if it has to be, but just... I was thinking we were going to do the throne happen. and then the the Great War, but it definitely makes more sense that they're going to kill these, especially since just killing a White Walker destroys all the whites, apparently. All the whites that they turned, That right? they turned. Yeah. So, really, so they gotta take out... So, if you can be strategic about the it. The real big bad bitches. Right, right, right. And that handles that. Or take out the Night King, and they're all dead. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. Although... Oh, <laughs> good fucking luck, because that nigga swooped in on that dragon, and I said, oh, no! We have not seen <laughs> him crack at all. Every scene with the Night King on this oh series so far has been him looking confident as balls. Like, yes. every single time you see him, that nigga's like, I'm not afraid Mm-mm, of no. shit. I'm actually just coming for my shit, so. And y'all left a dragon here? Thank you so much. I'll be taking this. Oh, what a great show. Anyway, so, yeah, the VMA sucked. Um, I guess they sucked. I don't know what happened after that first hour. I didn't watch any of it, actually. Only thing I know that happened was that uh, Fifth Harmony threw some girl off the stage in Shade, which... 
was funny to me, although okay. I only one whose name I know is Normandy. Right. Um, no shade. I'm just waiting on that girl to go solo. Any day now, please. So. Uh, and I know that Remy Ma said Nikki what's good, which was just dumb. Mm. And we're all tired. Yeah, like, like I said, I didn't watch that, so. <laughs> like, I'm tired of the both of y'all. I saw Kendrick's point. performance. I saw Lil Uzi and, uh, not Samuel. What is that white boy's name with the red hair? Ed, Ed Sheeran. Sheeran, yes. I saw Lil Uzi. Together. Yes, they did. <laughs> and you should have seen Ed Sheeran <sighs> talking about, push me to the edge with his little ukulele. All my friends are dead. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm so glad I didn't watch this shit. That was a mess. That's where the Cardi B gifts co- gift comes from. What Cardi B gift? You haven't seen the, oh my God, you really have not seen shit to do with the VMAs. I just don't care. It's like the only thing anybody cares about from the whole show is when, is when, I keep wanting to call him Samwell. Ed, Ed Sheeran. Sheeran starts singing the hook and uh, Cardi is like, and her face scrunches up in this crazy way. It's hilarious. I can't believe you haven't seen this. I have not. I really haven't paid no attention to it and it sounds like I really didn't miss it. Well, anything. now I have to find, well, it's kind of a dark gift. I, mean, you I can't loved see it well. the VMAs when white people were cl- climbing up on the the goddamn set and making mm-hmm. a fool of themselves. That's true, true, and true. Marlon showed his ass literally one year. I remember that. And uh, there was just big moments that everybody talked about for like a whole week afterwards. And now you don't find out the VMAs happened <laughs> until a whole week afterwards. So I, I mean, mean, there may have been big moments, but you niggas had it up against the Game of Thrones finale, so nobody was gonna see them. That's it. That was your whole problem. Uh, oh, I do know that also um, Amber and 21 Rose were there. Amber had a uh, a wig on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that wig. She's one of the few who looks better bald or with as little hair as possible. As little hair as possible. Amber uh, is still going strong with uh, uh, Mr. 21 and even bought him, <laughs> bought him a... Custom made 18 karat white gold promise ring. What? A promise ring for a grown for a grown man? Wait, no, a promise ring? Wait. <laughs> Wait, a promise ring? A custom made 18 karat she bought for white him? gold promise ring. Eternity ring. You cannot be serious. Seven carats of eternally flawless. Seven carats. F color round, brilliant white diamonds. You're joking. They oh, with loyalty twenty one spelled out. Oh my god. In natural triple A red rubies, oh eleven hundred stones total. No way. Commissioned by Amber Rose and made for twenty one savage. I cannot believe that. Ben Baller, the celebrity jeweler, custom made a promise ring. Holy God! For Twenty One Savage from Amber Rose. That is that is probably one of the most pathetic things I've ever heard. A promise ring? Are you two grown ass niggas promising that one day you'll you'll what get married? What? I don't even know that people still did that. Why wouldn't you just get engaged though? Promise rings are for kids who can't do that. I thought that promise rings died with like the Sadie Hawkins dance yeah like like virginity formals and all that. Why would you do this? this? Very babysitter's club. Oh my god. Uh, He decided to show the ring off on Snapchat and the only reason I mentioned this (laughs) is to show you the caption he put here which says excuse my nails. Uh I'll go against the world about you. I just love the fact that he had to say, excuse my name. She probably told him, mm, you didn't even have a manicure when I, when I blessed you with this ring. That's why you're supposed to keep your nails done, fellas, because you never know. Amber Rose probably clips his toenails while he sleeps. Oh, she probably does. Cleans under him and so everything. Like, oh, so he won't scratch up her good sheets. She got 5,000 thread count sheets, and here you come with talents for feet. Like, what the hell am I supposed to tell all of these mm-hmm, people when mm-hmm. they want me to sell their, their shit on, on Instagram when I have all of these goddamn gashes <laughs> on my shin from your goddamn big toe oh, God. cutting up my legs in the middle of the night? A promise ring is just so... I can't understand. Like, you, you should have just called it a ring. You should have just said, I got him this ring. That makes so much more sense. Like, that thing... That Cardi B got, whatever that is. Like, you could just say that. Like, we just had this done for you. Is 
a promise ring like a specific kind of ring because it yeah it's a it's a promise that one day we'll get married that's what i mean like teenagers used to give them to each other because they can't actually go out and get engaged but my thing is why is the jeweler describing it as a promise eternity ring what makes it that and not just a ring you like saying why that you want a you promise ring, a ring? <laughs> because i feel see that's what i'm saying i feel like the jeweler is calling that because whoever commissioned it called it that because otherwise it would just be a ring that's what I'm saying, man. Don't make no sense. Um, Northwest apparently love her. Cannot stand her brother still to this day. I never get tired of these stories. Uh, when interviewed recently, uh, North's mother discussed uh, their relationship, saying. She doesn't know if it's because North is the older sister or what she was very open about and earlier or earlier in Saints life. Yeah. Last year. (laughs) Last year. Right. When things started. Uh, North was not having the greatest time (laughs) with a new baby in the house, especially a boy. I'm thinking that's probably a lot of what it is. She probably wanted a sister. Yes. So, Did you ever see one of those two girls, the McClure twins? Oh, yeah. Oh, God, they are girls. adorable. They when are they so found cute. Out that their mom, their mom was, was pregnant. pregnant again, <laughs> and they were talking about it could be a boy or a girl. And so one of them was they like. Were, at first, they were both like, boys, no, we're not trying to hear. <laughs> send it back. Any of that <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> girls. Yeah. Now we can discuss. Sister. And eventually, after much, much, you know. Like goading and <laughs> trying to reason with these children, you know, <laughs> promising <laughs> then take them for frozen yogurt right. or whatever. Like finally, one of the twins cracked and was like, "I'm gonna love the baby either way." And her sister's like, "No, bitch! I already said <laughs> what I said. Decision is final. We're not bringing Must any boys, girls, in here." I love it. So I'm thinking that's maybe what North is going on. Uh, got I have going to ask on. my mama, did I act like that when my brother was born? Because I was about, I was a couple years older than him, same as North. So she, but she still has an attitude. Yeah. And Saint will be too soon. So right. she's not. Saint is like walking up, forming whole words. You know, yeah. like he's like, like a guy of personality. <laughs> right. Like trying Come to love you. Me. Right. It's What's wrong with me? <laughs> like, Why doesn't North love me? <laughs> She's not with the shit. Quit denying my affection. Um, you know, sometimes North likes to set up tea parties that are no boys allowed. Um, and if she has to slam the door in her brother's face, she's going to do it. <laughs> Ruthless. And apparently Saint also loves to mimic North <laughs> because that's his big sister. Right. I can just completely see this. <laughs> me <dynamic>. too. <laughs> they just sound like babies. It does. Like, it's just hilarious like this is my big sister i'm gonna do what she does right and she's over here like oh get, get him, him away, away <laughs> from me like i was the lit one i was the one that everybody was talking about me get it gone right. gross burn it with fire she's, like she just can't like she is just disgusted Kim said that North be like, no, boys, not even daddy. Like, right. I'm letting you know, girl. Sir, you had a hand in this. So it, you can't Take come either. Take your son and go. You guys go <laughs> and play in the, the dirt or whatever it is that men do. And we'll be over here being gorgeous and smart and awesome. Gross. Mm, yeah. None of that. I yeah. mean, I don't know what she's going to do when the next one comes. <laughs> right? Because don't they have another one on the way with the surrogate? I think so. Yeah. So maybe this one will be a girl and North will be <laughs> will be pleased. She'll be satisfied. Mm-hmm. Maybe she won't actively hate this one, but we'll see. She had a gorgeous photo shoot in Interview Magazine with some tanned prop next to her, but North looked amazing. Oh, yes. North absolutely did look Didn't uh, she look so in cute in her little shoot. throwback dresses and stuff? Her and her dogs. Mm-hmm. And her little Mary Janes and ruffled socks and all that. She is the cutest child. Well, you know, good luck to the celebrities over there, the real stars of that family. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of babies, Brandy wants you girls to know for the last black ass oh, time Lord. that she is not with child. Brandy is not pregnant. Uh, so someone took a picture with her at like Zoomies or something. I don't know where the fuck she was at. Mm. It looked like a mall somewhere. And she had a bit of a, you know. I thought Zoomies was a club. I hate you so much. You know, like whatever. That just, like, <laughs> it's 
Spencer's or whatever. The yeah, fuck. no, the skateboarding kid store. So she had like a pudge, you know, going on, mm-hmm. and there have been rumors that Brandy is pregnant, going on for a while, possibly by a uh, sweet that tea, gay the Baptist. boy, right? Yeah, her, whatever. That Somebody. Was. Um, Those rumors were going around at Essence Fest. Somebody saw her the night before I got there and was like, "I swear, Brandy pregnant." So she posted a little boomerang photo of her in like a small little dress. Her stomach looks flatter here. Caption says, hashtag silly girl, pregnant my ass. Damn, can a bitch just could have been bloated yesterday? I ain't gonna lie, I did look pregnant, but you would think I would have had the baby by now. LOL, son, son. So this has been going on for a while then. She may have a condition. Or maybe she was just eating. Who cares? I mean, she was eating a lot. <laughs> like, I mean, like, and Brandy has always been thin. Even when she was pregnant with that with that little girl, Sarai, Sarai. Even yeah. then, like, she's never been big. So I could see why people would speculate. But, I mean, I don't know. For me, it's a non-issue. Like, of course, you're not pregnant. So if you want to get on Instagram one last time and address it, that's fine. I'm just, anytime she's not talking about Whitney Houston, I'm like, good job. Keep going. <laughs> Can your uh, cycle cause bloating like Absol- that? Oh, my God. Are I don't you know fucking- how the vagina works. Nigga, two days before it my period starts. I just heard it itself. Yes. yes, they do. They do clean themselves. I don't have one or know anything about them. I mean, but never mind. I thought. Mm. Never been too close to one. So when you were in elementary school, y'all didn't have like these these development classes or like a yeah. little workshop or something they didn't tell but you but i didn't girls have work. a vagina and i knew i wasn't interested in so you just so didn't I pay just no attention to the test no, or whatever i had to do and yeah. then i put that out of my mind got your little sample of deodorant just, and no. left it alone you know like if i have a child one day because i hate myself mm-hmm. and it happens to be a girl then i suppose i should figure out what her life is going to be i mean yeah like, it's, just, it's an important sort of right no it is i just feel like the ins and outs literally yeah. Of the, well, the PMS, like a week before my period start, my titties swell in extra cup size and they are extremely tender and they a hurt lot. a lot. Okay. Like I anytime that. they're not in a bra, they hurt really bad. But yeah, you can definitely get bloated because of your period. Like so maybe that far you, out? Uh, Yeah, you could, especially if you are bloated and then also like eating just lots there. of salt or having some drinks or whatever. Those all contribute to bloat. And then that time of the month just makes it worse. So it could be another few days or a week before you go back to normal. My whole thing was just that, like, if this woman, if this woman is not pregnant and she's, if she said that she's not pregnant, I'm just, in, I feel inclined to believe her. Right. Because, like. You would know. Right. You know. What's and in your uterus more than I would. Right. What would be the point? Of saying you're not pregnant if you know you're pregnant and about to have a baby. Right. It just doesn't right. No, that just defies logic. And it wasn't like she looked nine months pregnant. It wasn't like Brandy was ever out here right. wilding. It looks like it may have been like a little baby bump or yeah, something Yeah, could have been like a baby that. bump. Could have been you had a bunch of po' boys. <laughs> it could have been even one. So, so, Brandy's just letting you know that she is n- pregnant with nothing. Okay. okay. But a love for Queen of the Night. Um... Usher. Oh, okay. Usher. I had to think about it. So, uh, Usher apparently responded to the civil lawsuit that he got smacked across the genitals with last month. $20 million, in fact, by an anonymous woman who's accusing him of infecting her with the herpes that we've all been discussing recently here. Right, right, right. Um... And Usher's response, he's uh, reportedly claiming that uh, the alleged victim has no proof that she was infected by him. Mm-hmm. She could have been infected before or after the encounter. Uh, the interesting thing is, oh, he also says the victim actually put her herself at risk by having casual, unprotected sexual intercourse and or oral sex. So basically, you knew what you were signing up for? I don't know. Uh, he just never denies you know, having, having herpes. herpes right. Or because even... if he didn't, I feel like he'd start there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it just feels like the beginning and the end. So Okay, so yes. Most people would kick off with, you know... I don't have herpes if that was the case. But then being like, that's what you signed up for because you had unprotected sex. Like, okay, yes, it's foolish to have unprotected sex. It is in most cases. But 
if you have an STD, you have a duty to tell somebody that, especially something that you can give somebody even if you're wearing condoms. Like, condoms probably wouldn't have saved her from getting it anyway. So the whole argument is moot. You should have said something. But he insists that he didn't give it to her, I guess. Do you have proof you didn't sleep with her? I don't know. That sounds messy, but it's more than one person anyway. So it's like you saying this about one person who accused you, but there are like four or five more. So what's the story with them niggas? Nothing. They all lying. Everybody lying. So you just don't have it and everybody out here lying on you. This just feels like Usher's attorney was like, look, this is the best we can do because (laughs) this is all we got. Quite honestly, you already know what's going on down there. His insurance about to go way up. You know what you've been doing. Mm. And, uh, that's done with that. I mean, his insurance was already like, sir, we ain't got nothing to do with that. Uh, and as soon as we can get out of this situation, we're gonna. Um, Damn. So that's what Usher so is So they refuse. With. So if, if they're refusing to pay, I wonder if they're just going to drop him from coverage altogether. Be like, that's what I'm saying. If he gets you dropped and has to find another insurance company, his rates are definitely going up. But I mean, them's the breaks. You have to tell people when you have an STD. You have to. It's just, it's that simple. I mean. Period. There you go. Well, last but not least, um, let's talk about the first White Walker, <laughs> uh, Taylor Slytherin. <laughs> no, don't do Slytherin. I'm half Slytherin. What? I took the test, the Pottermore. I got sorted. I did it four times. How are you half Slytherin? Because Slytherin was the first one I got. But then I took it three more times, and you know, the test changes the questions each time. And I got Ravenclaw the next two times I took the Pottermore quiz. And then I took one that was the whole quiz with all the questions in one, and I got Ravenclaw on that one too. So I'm calling myself Raver, Ravelin, or Slitherclaw. That's better, maybe. But I'm not going to denounce my Slytherin. I'm not going to accept it as my soul house either. And I don't have to because the hat was going to put Harry in Slytherin. Until he said no, anything but. Harry Potter literally is like the savior of the wizarding world. Okay, I can be too. I have a scar right here, right here, and sometimes it hurts. And when do white people not come for me? I can be an exception is what I'm saying. Three more times I got Ravenclaw and only one Slytherin. No, don't do this. You have to pick one. No, I don't. Harry Potter is not half Slytherin. (sighs) And... Harry Potter was like... This isn't... No. He had a little bit of Voldemort. Right. That's where that came from. The, well, the, that was from, you know, missing the curse. Well, I'm only I'm only a goblet of fire, so maybe was, I don't know everything. The hat was a little bit high. <laughs> okay, the hat was not high. I realize <laughs> that that wasn't who he was sensing. That's why she was like... The hat didn't oh. know who Harry Potter was. Oh, okay. My she nigga. didn't know where to put Mama because... There was, like, two things going on in there. I'm just saying, if Harry Potter can almost be put into Slytherin and then go somewhere else, so can I. And everybody was like, Slytherin gets a bad rap because of the books. I know they turned out the most because... evil witches and wiz- wizards, but but and the, they have also turned out lots of great ones. Assholes. But they have turned out lots of great people also. Like... Well, we don't know them. That's what I'm saying. Okay. The book's a little biased. Okay. But still, I'm Ravenclaw. Leave me alone. Well, uh, about this white witch. So, Taylor Swift Taylor is Taylor Malfoy. I imagine her as Draco's mama. Um, She has a new album coming out. It's called Reputation. Uh, <laughs> Not just this look on your face. Because who gives a shit her new song is called look what look at me look at look at what you made me do holy god it is so bad um it sucks a lot uh there's a video that came out also alongside the vmas i heard oh yeah they aired that in that first hour too that's how i ended up seeing it uh and here we are now i mean the video is marginally better than the song but that's it would be hard to be worse than that song so I decided to go ahead and listen to this song on my own just because I know that Taylor Swift pays a lot of people a lot of money to make sure that you have no choice but to hear her song mm-hmm. and see her pasty face. Uh, like so I'd like ABC, like UPS. Uh, I saw a Taylor Swift UPS truck literally a block away from my house. A this Taylor weekend. Swift UPS truck? She has 
her own oh my UPS God. trucks. That's fucked up. Really, really, it's just her album like cover a banner or whatever, or whatever. But still, on the side of a bunch of UPS trucks, saying that UPS is the official delivery service for her album or some shit like that. What? So you will more than likely, if you haven't already, see a UPS truck at some point. With Taylor Swift's face oh, on the side of no. it. Oh, no. Thank you, you for the You will probably warning. be hearing her music at funerals, weddings, oh, no. Sunday service, wherever she can get it played <laughs> because she just pays to make sure that her music is everywhere. Dominican okay. barbershops, bikini bottom, uh-huh. yeah. you know. Also hear it there. Sports things. Yes. I'm sure it'll show up at something. I'm sure so, it will. I listened to it. It's awful. Uh, like, just, I don't That's even my know. That's honest opinion. If it was a good song, I would give it to her. Because she has some good songs. I have given it to her yeah. when she's had songs that I think are good. I really and liked Red. I despise her. That we know it. So, this song is ass. <laughs> just plain, out and out. Look what you made me do. Look, ass. Look what you, look, ew. Look, 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 look what you made me do. Bitch, what? And the whole time I'm like, okay, so what is it that we're looking at? Like, what did right. you do? What did you do, bitch? Like, what the fuck are you even talking about? Who did about? you kill? Who's supposed to be scared of you? What? What happened? So, this is being labeled as a Kanye West diss and a Kim Kardashian diss and all that other stuff. And honestly, I don't give a fuck about any of that. Like, mm-hmm. I had my fun with the whole Taylor Swift dragging and Kim Kardashian got snake emojis that she's riding or whatever. Like, yeah. I, that was whatever. Here's the thing. I do think that the whole uh, releasing the album on uh, Miss Donda's birthday. Sure. I mean, it just you so know, happens like, to be a Friday. And oh, that was not at all intentional. I mean, there's a lot of other Fridays this year, but you know, that one. It just had to be that one. That that specific day. Yeah. Sure, sis. Um, I mean, we already know you a liar. Like, this is the thing. So, the song and video, to me, seems like it is addressing... Her dying and being, like, reborn as the villain that we all say that she is. Yeah. Like, she has this moment where she says, oh, Taylor can't, the old Taylor can't come up through the phone. Why? Because she's dead. <laughs> she's dead. <laughs> like. So dramatic. And there are all of these old Taylor Swift from like old videos and stuff. In yeah. the video. And she's, like, standing on top of them. And she... Talking about, oh, don't, why you look so shocked? No one's been shocked. At, like, basically saying every criticism she's ever heard about herself, mm-hmm. except the ones that actually matter, like that colonial ass video that yeah. you put out, yeah. like your anti feminist rants, mm-hmm. like the fact that you don't give a shit about black women, like the fact that you have pictures of yourself hugged up with a white man with a Nazi, a swastika, right? Over his, like, None she's of that. She's talking about all the other stuff. She's just talking about the fact that she, you know, gasps when she wins awards. <laughs> right. Or, you know, she's playing the victim and stuff, which that's what. So you my do thing do is, that, though, is the thing. What am I supposed to take away from this? Because this is the exact behavior that you always right. exhibit, weirdo. Somebody says something about you that you don't like, you write a fucking song about right. it and do like self parody. And then you go on to make a whole bunch of other shit ass, mediocre ass music. And you get a whole bunch of white girls to rally behind you because you came into the game using yeah. the narrative that you're now trying to act like, oh, look at everybody saying this stuff. No, girl, you absolutely did act super shocked when you would win all you those did. awards and you knew that you were going to win the award prior <laughs> to winning them because your people made sure that you won those fucking awards right. and we clocked it don't be mad at everybody else and try and make videos like this now girl because you can't act we've been able to see through all of this stuff Thank you so all much. along girl <laughs> what was the point of doing the shit we knew it did I not say on this whole ass show that she was going to come right back and do yep. something and you know talk about the history of snakes nice. and the bitch literally <laughs> made a chair made of snakes with snakes pouring her tea and all this other corny shit that song so much is a musical version of I know you are but what am I (laughs) that's what it is it's like say anything about me you're funny oh a mean thing say like a longer sentence oh Kid Fury, you have a great knack. Kid Fury, you have a great knack for yeah. picking out desserts. Albert, you pick out desserts. You have great you shoes, have great all, shoes the all the time. <laughs> and that's exactly what she's doing, but it's a song. <laughs> like, that's what the song is. Like, 
I don't understand what someone is supposed to take away from this because your stands would love you regardless of what the fuck you put out. They don't give a fuck whether people think that you're mean, nice. They just love you yeah. because that damage you're, you're, is done. Right. So for everybody else, what are we supposed to take away from this? This is just a whining toddler. And much like a, an adult with, you know, common sense would say to a five-year-old who's whining, like, if I were to be like, Taylor, tie your shoes or you're going to bust your ass. Are you go, <laughs> Taylor! <laughs> like that may make you feel better that you just got red, but how does that change the fact that you still look dumb yeah, and, and you're gonna, gonna bust your ass? ass. Right. right. It's still gonna happen. I was still right. Like, okay, sis, because my shoes are tied. I'm not gonna eat the asphalt. You right. are. So Taylor Swift is a liar. Taylor True. Swift is the first white walker. <laughs> She's the Twilight King. <laughs> Um, she sucks hard and I can't stand her. <sighs> and I am just satisfied with the fact that people finally see on a much larger scale what I've been trying to say. That she ain't shit. She ain't never gonna be shit. Mm-hmm. And she is walking white lies. I mean, I haven't heard anything but facts. The thing about Taylor Swift is that had she done the whole snake thing and embraced it like, wow, yeah, I was a lying ass bitch and I was out here scheming behind your backs and nobody trusts me because they shouldn't trust me because I was out here lying on all types of niggas. Then that would be one thing. But she turned it into a, oh, no, you guys said you wouldn't do this and you did it. And now you made me look bad and I'm the bad girl in your movies and all this other shit. And it's like, but. But all of that is true. Yeah. Like, you still did those things. You still You did. still lied on Kanye. I don't know why you're trying to make this song like they painted you to be the bad guy and you weren't really. The thing about Taylor is that you, you are the things people say about you. You really do act that way. So it makes sense for you to be called out. And so the way she approached the whole snake thing, I just thought was predictable and trash. And I still don't know what it is you did that we're supposed to give a fuck about. Like, I don't. All this look at what you made me do, but you haven't done. There's literally, what What did you do? You what didn't hurt anybody in any way. In this process, what did you do? You dressed, you did some Walking Dead cosplay in your video. You tried to twerk with some segregated gays. While oh, you, God, like, that you know that fucking train wreck. You remember the episode of the Parks and Recreation where, where Amy got that half perm? And she had to go to work and she had to her. <laughs> That's what she looked like. No, but not. And that fake ass formation shit that she was doing with all of those gays also in fishnets. Talking and crop about tops. that wasn't inspired by formation, girl. Cool, sis. All right, yeah. How about you just nice piss story. off? Nice story, girl. With your, right, with your racially divided gays. Three gays in color contacts over here and three white, maybe white Latino gays over here. With and some I love awkward TS. ass. <sighs> anyway, you she didn't do anything, Taylor. You didn't sucks. do shit. Not one fucking thing, girl. What an expensive trash bag. <laughs> like, what a very, I'm very costly shit project. I'm just tired, mm-hmm. but I'm glad that more of y'all can see her for what she is now. I would have actually been more shocked if she would have just came out with a regular ass song about, like, Sour Patch Kids and you know, being white in America or something else. But the fact that you came back and were like, I'm just going to attack everybody who came for me with shade right. and beautiful gowns. I'm bored, so. All right, little girl. So that's about it for Hot Tops this week. Do we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to come back with your drama. Support for today's episode of The Read is being brought to you by Stadium Goods. Stadium Goods is a premium sneaker and streetwear marketplace that sells only the most sought-after footwear, apparel, and other hard-to-find items. With over 100,000 options, they have something for every shopper in every style, size, and at every price point. That includes rare collectibles for the connoisseur, high-performance gear to the athletes, and comfortable classic for everyday wear, all of which are unworn, authenticated, and in mint condition. Yes, go ahead and check out their website. Now they've got lots of different styles on there, something to suit everybody. I'm much more of the casual shoe wearer, so, you know, point me to the flip-flops and the slides and things of that nature. But check out StadiumGoods.com to find rare and limited edition kicks or go to their flagship store at 47 Howard Street right here in New York City. For the sneakerheads shopping online, enter our code READ at StadiumGoods.com to get 10% off your first order. That's stadiumgoods.com, code R-E-A-D, to save 10% on your first order. Get yourself something new and cute, and let's move on. 
All right, so we are back, and it is time for listener letters. It sure is. Send your questions to Ask the Read at, g- at gmail dot com. We may just read them aloud on the show. Hmm. Now, what are we gonna do with this? All right, our first question. Why is the internet not working? Of all the times, mm, mm, girl, mm. click. Oh my god, seriously. It says, time sensitive, please help. Okay. This is from Denise Huxtable. And she says, my boyfriend of six years and I live together. And earlier this year, he gained full soul custody of his 12-year-old daughter. Wow, I'm very close with her. And she tells people I'm her stepmom, as I basically have been since she was five. Oh, all right. Well, so, cross yeah. that. <laughs> he has a great career as an engineer. And here's why I'm emailing. His job may send him to North Carolina to work on a project for several months. I'm perfectly confident in my ability to take care of his daughter, we live in Pennsylvania, on my own. But for some reason, it bothers me that I would be taking care of someone who isn't technically my stepdaughter. I have no legal ties to this child since I'm not his wife. It may just be semantics, but it kind of bothers me that he would he would expect me to basically single parent his daughter when I'm not even his wife. I feel like the title of girlfriend should hold different expectations and responsibilities than that of wife. In typing all this out, I realize that I probably have no reason to be bothered. The bottom line is that I love them both and they both love me. So that should be all that matters. Nonetheless, I still feel a way and I very much would appreciate your thoughts. Would you be bothered in a similar situation? Love, Denise Huxtable. Well, Denise, hmm. Kifuri, what do you think? Um... I think you're going to have to decide how much you love this nigga. Mm. I think because, I mean, I would not do it. And I feel like, you know, past the fact that I just a whole 12 year old too, meaning they're already in the prime position to have She's an attitude. She's bitchy, right? Starting her period and all that. No, ma'am. I mean, a couple months, right? But... This is several months, not a couple. So I'm thinking the better part of the school year, which is probably why that child is not going yeah because then it would be like switching schools and all that in the middle of the year or whatever so i just if i don't have children of my own i have no legal ties to you right to really like have this make sense I would feel a way too. Like, how did I just inherit a child? (laughs) right like this was none no kind of my baby not married like for any reason i could leave this nigga tomorrow right so now <sighs> luckily you and this little girl get along right so that's good that's very fortunate that's why i said you know i guess you got to decide how much you love this nigga <laughs> because if you're confident that you can actually do it and you and the girl get along then at least it wouldn't it sounds like it won't be this really heinous process where you're just you know, biting your tongue every step of the way until the nigga comes back. Right. But I don't really know what, I, I mean. Would you stay and parent? Hell no. I said that. Like, <laughs> I mean, but you've been with this nigga for six years. You've known this little girl since she was five. And she's 12 now. That's a long time. Oh, I must have missed it's that It's a six part. year long relationship. No, this, this didn't just happen. They've been together for a long time. So. Child. <laughs> Would you do it? <laughs> Look at you. You're trying to say no, but you would. So then why the fuck y'all been together for this mother? If you've been together for six years and you've known and had a relationship with this child for that whole ass long and he's ready to, you know, skip town <laughs> for, a couple, <laughs> for several months. Right. To work, but still. So then why not get married? You're like, I don't know, man. I just know that I would be feeling some kind of way too. And if you have been with a nigga for this long, I would probably be looking or to have a conversation with him like, so this is starting to feel like shit that official ass married couples yeah. do. This is like stepmom behavior. So let's let's have that discussion because I know that I don't plan on being a stepmama in my head forever. <laughs> so what do you want to do? <laughs> that's real. So my first thought is either y'all should get married if if that's the direction your relationship is going in. Or, I mean, I'm assuming that this child can't go back to her mama. You got, he got full soul custody for a reason, I'm, I'm assuming. I'm assuming as well. Right. So assuming that this little girl can't go back and stay with her mama for this amount of time, then either I would say y'all get married and then you'll legally be her stepmother and it won't be an issue or her daddy can sign over guardianship 
And that way you will be this child's legal guardian because you're right to not do this without some sort of legal protection. Yes. Like, you have to enroll her in school. You have to be able to go up to the school if something happens. Right. You have to be able to take her to the doctor. All types of shit can happen with kids. Right. She needs a legal guardian. And that, like that's a legal process. Right. So even if y'all aren't ready to get married, you should at least he should at least sign over guardianship. And if he's if he's not willing to do that, then you need to have a whole conversation about why you good enough to watch his baby in a casual way, but not in an official way. Because that's trash. Like, yeah. if you trusted me alone with your baby for months, then you should trust me with guardianship over your child. Like, it's it's foolish to not. Like, yeah. there's all kinds of decisions that would need to be made, and she needs an adult who can legally make those decisions, like, in the same city and state. But casual decisions in life in general, that type of shit like this is just what niggas do. Like, niggas don't <laughs> like to, you know, sit back and, like, think Ooh, about things. No. They're just like, you know what? I got to go do this. Hey, sit here and chill real quick till I get back. And it's not like... Man, but life goes on. No, I I won't. Right. <laughs> I actually, I don't plan on doing any of that bullshit you just said to me. Right. So, you let's never have know an what actual happens. conversation... Since this is a 12-year-old girl that's involved, right. I am not her mama, and anything could happen, God forbid, where I got to speak to an official about something. <laughs> Lord forbid And they're it. going to say, who are you? Right. Oh, that's nice. So when we find somebody that actually, <laughs> like... Your name's not on the birth certificate. You're not her foster mom. You're not her adopted mom. You're not... You don't have a marriage license to her father showing kinship. You literally... You could be any bitch on the street Do you with this child. even know her daddy? Like, people... <laughs> it's just... Anybody mad could call CPS and you would, you would have, like, no claim to keep that child. It just doesn't... So, yeah, if for no other reason than do it for that. I remember when I was a kid, my mama, somebody asked my mama a similar thing to watch their kids while they went some army shit, got deployed or something. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, can you watch my kids, you know, for a year while I'm gone? And she was like, uh, not if I ain't running these kids. I'm not like. Right. Because I guess because my mom was a teacher, so she thought more about it. But she was like, uh, no, you got me fucked up. I won't be watching your kids without guardianship. Actually, so. no, sis. And the one, that was the thing, though. The woman didn't want to sign over guardianship. My mom was like, well, good luck finding somebody to keep them I kids. I hope, you Tuh. know, I pray for the best for that you is it, and, and that is all. Tuh, but goodbye. No. Thanks so much for not coming. For me, it would be a bigger struggle of not even, once you get the legal part taken care of, it's, wow, bitch, a full-time parent to a 12-year-old little girl. That I have nothing to do with. Remember, in me at 12, and how I could be real moody and want to keep to myself and then all of a sudden have an attitude and want to go out with my friends and talk crazy and not do no chores. Uh uh-uh. uh. And you can't be like, wait till your daddy come home. <laughs> I'm going to tell your, oh, your daddy going to light your ass up. You no, ain't got none sis, of that. You wait for my daddy to come home. <laughs> you ain't got no choice. We're both going to wait for him to I come ain't home. Got bitch. No choice. <laughs> Shut your ass up. <laughs> Right? It's not going to take long for that little girl to disrespect you. Right? She already know what the deal is. She's not dumb. She's oh, not that man. young. Okay. So our next question comes from, let's say, Joanna. It's synonymous. Sure. And Joanna says, my lying, cheating ex emailed me af- at work after almost three years of no context. There was no sincere apology. Just uh, congratulations on all the good things God is doing in your life type of email. God is definitely working in my life as I have been promoted at work, gotten engaged, and and I am pregnant with a baby boy all since I dumped his deceitful self. In his email, he also included a Bible verse, Matthew 6, 14. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But Leave him out of it. if you do not forgive others their sins, your father will not forgive your Leave sins. Leave him out of this. <laughs> I am by no means pressed to respond to this fool. It has already been two weeks since the email, but what are your thoughts? I have nothing nice to say. And the only Bible verse I can offer him is Isaiah 48, 22. There is no peace for the wicked. <laughs> Thanks. Anonymous. Joanna. I mean, honestly, I, I feel like no. <laughs> I would do the same thing. I mean, you're getting a crisp, premium, high end delete and block. <laughs> like <laughs> that's it. I mean, you don't ever need to contact me again. This was not necessary. Like, yeah, congratulations. Yeah, you see me doing good. Oh, you've been creeping on my Facebook. Oh, you see my engagement photo shoot. Oh, okay, you see my maternity pictures. You see a bitch doing good at work, getting promotions and shit. Niggas always come back around when they see you got a little glow to you. Link was just talking about I this. I can't handle like, her on Instagram. Oh my God, it's just so smart. Like, this is literally it, bitch. 
Now, if I was out here looking miserable, if mm-hmm. I was out here mm-hmm. sad, if I was all on my ass and you hearing I'm running through the streets looking crazy or something like that, you wouldn't be reaching out, oh, how you been? Or, you know, let's go to, to Bible study together or nothing like that. You want Lord. to be invading my space because you see that I'm doing just fucking fine right. without you. Oh, go away. This Link is never Lush about you, about sweetheart. This. This is never about you. Like, see, the problem is when you know that you are lit and this doesn't have anything to do with anything but just your confidence and love of yourself, recognizing your strengths, recognizing your weaknesses, flaws, and just embracing the fact that life is a journey and you're going to fuck up. And if your intentions are good, you just get your ass back up and do better the next time. Like when you're just comfortable in your existence and you can exude that comfort and that happiness, whether you got a new man, whether you got a new house car and you like whatever, just right. that glow about you where it's like, you know what? I'm just a child of, of God. Or if you don't believe in God, I'm a child of earth or whatever. And I'm out here <laughs> living my absolute best life. You know, miserable exes, the ones who should have been your exes, Lord. the ones that need to stay your exes, Don't do this. will always show right back up talking about W-Y-D. Always. N-Y, bitch, not you. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, scoot. I haven't been thinking about you for a long time, sir. You see how blessed I am? I'm over here doing very well. So why even bring your trifling ass over here? Did you think I was going to see your email and be like, oh... The love we once had is risen up again me all anew. And I'm ready to leave my husband and child. Oh, you get me. Like, <laughs> mess, mess. I'm just going to make sure that if you ever even think about sending me an email again, you're going to get a return email that says, bitch, you thought. Right, right, right. So, although I think I would not be above sending back that that Bible verse. <laughs> like, no peace for the wicked. Like, you, you get what you deserve. That this is what you deserve from me, niggas. That's tempting. But then it opens up the communication. He's going to exactly. email back. Damn, exactly. Yeah. I've gotten trapped in that. <laughs> me too. A few times. Me too. God All I it. intended to do was be petty. <laughs> and I fucked up because I actually gave, gave you attention. And that's all the nigga wants. Remember that. Yep. It doesn't really matter. Like, that nigga probably never even read the Bible. He probably <laughs> saw that quote on somebody's IG Live and just figured this is going to be something sweet to send to her. Like, you, he does not Google care. Google Bible verses about forgiveness. Right. Exactly. <laughs> like, that's it. Like, I know she go to church. So let me find something about God. That's it. So you saying anything back to him is all he wants. He just wants for you to respond to him if you really want it to sting if you really want it to burn right just don't say nothing at all that's the worst indifference it's hard it's hard to to do especially when you think of something really petty and stank that you could say back i love being petty i I do but he doesn't care what you say back he just cares that you respond exactly and if all you do is cuss him out he's gonna be glad like at least she talking to me like a dumbass exactly (laughs) Oh, okay. So let's see what we have. This slow ass internet. Oh, this one says, "Should I sell pussy or nah?" Hmm. I'm not. Let's take to a look. That. See. Okay. This says, "My name is Cinnamon." Recently, I was out for a night on the town when we saw this girl with cute shoes, and I complimented her, and we sparked up a conversation. While we were on the street talking, guys kept coming up to us because we we're both very attractive. Work. Hmm, okay. Congrats. But we curved them with a swiftness. She eventually asked me if I was working and I was confused because it was nighttime and I was headed to the club to meet my friends. All right. But after looking at her face, I realized she meant working as an escorting. I asked, I said no and asked her if she was and she said yes. Escorts are all over my city now, so I wasn't surprised. She told me that she makes $3,000 a night, drives a Jag, has a house, and just got a $10,000 ass. <laughs> And did I mention she's only 19? Wow. She offered to help me get started because she felt I could have the same success, even though I'm a little thick and in my late 20s. When I told her about my reservation, she pointed out that I'd be fucking these niggas for free, so why not get paid for it? (sighs) I've often joked about starting to strip to help pay bills because although I work, I don't make enough money to pay all my bills. I do have a lot of them and debt, and the thought of being financially stable is the only reason I'm considering it. But I'm a Christian and I have high morals and values. However, I do want a Range Rover. And I've always been a hustler. It's just human. 
So my question to you two is, should I start selling my pussy to pay my bills or keep hustling legally? What are your thoughts? Thanks. Love, Cinnamon. I'm not going to suggest that you sell your pussy to pay your bills on this show. Like, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm going to say for these reasons, no. Uh, <laughs> you want a Range Rover? That's why? I mean, no, I won't suggest it. If you decide that's something that you want to do, what I also won't do is judge you. Also but true. The thing is, like, I remember not too long ago, I said something on here about how I don't think that there's anything wrong with sex work or escorting or something. And somebody was like, how are you going to say there's nothing wrong with sex work? It's literally illegal. And I wanted to say, I could think of maybe five to ten things right now that Who are cares illegal. That about illegal? <laughs> like, right. We is illegal, and I be smoking every day. Every so... single... There isn't a day <laughs> that I don't. Like... White people write law so that the the shysty, shady, sneaky things that they do and all the different ways they steal from us on a corporate and government level are perfectly legal. So I don't give a shit about what people have white people have decided is legal and not. That that don't matter. I don't have a problem with sex work because I understand that people have bills to pay. Like we live in a capitalist society and niggas need niggas gotta pay this rent. So shit happens. Sometimes people have to sell sex, sometimes they want to. Like I'm in no position to judge people who choose to do that for whatever reason they choose to do it. So and I, I just also don't. don't think that sex work is simply ex escorting. Like there's, you know, there's all... a lot of different kinds. I mean, stripping is sex work. There's sex work that doesn't involve any kind of physical contact. So right. it doesn't mean literally having, having sex. sex. Although a lot of these girls do. And if somebody paid $10,000 for her ass, I'm sure they was tapping her ass. <laughs> Probably. Because you're not just going to buy ass and not fuck. You're not going to put your dick in it, but you paid for it. That ain't happening. But like 19 though. Right. No, see, I feel for that girl. Like, I feel like. 19 you probably grew up on instagram and seeing all these girls with big asses and that like you grew up in the height of that big ass phase when girls was getting you know shit done in motel rooms and all that so you probably aspired to it and so you 19 feeling like you balling right but the bottom will always fall out of that it will always fall out of that you have to have you can't escort forever you got to have a plan b like it's trendy for teenagers, like teen girls, yeah, really. This girl is really to young. have like these little girls are in junior high, like nine, ten, eleven grade, talking about they want red bottoms and Chanel bags and they want to be at Nobu Child. and all of this other stuff. You are a child. Right. Like, you can't even work more than 20, 30 hours right. a week. Who's if supposed you can to pay work for all this? at all. Right. Shut up and Man. allow yourself some time to be a kid. Right. Now, hitting your late 20s and talking about talking to your own pussy like, now we may need to put in some extra work. <laughs> That's <laughs> okay. something else. <laughs> talking to your own pussy like you're going to have to hold up your end right. of the rent around this bitch. That age is right. like, I can see a little bit more. Because <laughs> you have been through a little bit of real life. <laughs> right. Said, oh, it's real hard out and here. And real bills right. are now, you know, yeah. touching your existence. So you got to figure out what you're going to do. And then so. the debt collectors are calling you all the time. You struggling, paying half this week and half the next week and this and always trying to insurance make a dollar out of 15 all cents. This, like, like, bullshit. Insurance so high, you damn near wish you got sick to use the fucking insurance. You'd be like what am I paying for anyway what? it's a lot going on I'm just saying I understand being grown and the struggle with bills and all that so I I'm just not choose. saying you shouldn't I'm saying this it doesn't I don't know girl I just don't think that is just a whole lot of your business the same way I feel like anybody who escorts or does web chats or whatever if that's just your fucking business if that's what you feel like you want to do or need to do in order to survive, I am not going to judge you for that. However, if you just want a Range Rover, like if you saw this girl and she just happened to be super lit and you left her jeans and shoes and she talking about she flies to this country just to have brunch, like if you trying to get into the game for that, I would say, sweetheart. Right. I mean, I you mean, have... come on. The thing is, even with a legitimate job... It's very easy to not be able to pay all your bills or be comfortable, like she just said. Exactly. I mean, you could try it out, but I think you would find sex work a lot more difficult than what you're thinking. Exactly. Having sex with people in a in the regular, you know, dating, getting to know you, like you're someone I'm actually interested way, is very different from having sex for money 
Right. So I think maybe emotion, like there's a lot of different aspects to it that you have to consider, but I would caution you against it if only because you're like, uh, but I really want a Range Rover. Like That's just, I mean, <laughs> like, like you can get certainly it, but... get a Range Rover many other ways. I mean, I just, again, if you, if I happen to meet you at some point down the road, if you came to a read show or something and you're like, hey, y'all, I was the girl who wrote in the escort letter. Here's my new $10,000 ass. The game has been good to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I came up so fast, overnight, so let. Like, if you came to us with a sex worker, like, success story after this, I wouldn't be like, oh, girl, how could you? But I just. Right. I just and it's don't, probably like, not these niggas either. It's probably a bunch of 60-year-old white men who, like, run companies and shit. I mean, I don't want to say nothing, but I just hope you know that you're not going to be, you know, You're not going to find up. those 30-year-old fine black dudes right. who are paying thousands to have sex with you, You're girl. not going to have back-to-back insecure Daniels yeah, uh, or Kofi Or Cerebos. even one. Bitch, if you found even one insecure Daniel, my God. The things you could do with that man's abdomen. <laughs> It's divided up like a plate. Like, and you can't just expect to get your money and you look woo! disgusted and confused the whole time. Like you've right. got to approach this. You got to act like you're sexually attracted to them. Ugh, wrinkly balls on your forehead. Think about it. Balls, hairy white man balls in your mouth. I just think that some people, yeah, like you said, no, it may sound a bit. No thanks. You know, super easy because it's like I've had this pussy my whole life, like for free. I haven't been doing shit with her. No, but that's because it's complicated. If you're seriously concerning it, I would seriously do some research before I seriously yeah. did it. And I would but talk to other do, girls girl, your age. Business. Talk to girls your age and your size because you mentioned that you're a little bigger than her and a little older. And those are things that are probably going to drive your rate down because these men are nasty. And the younger they can get them, the more they'll pay for them. Right. Talk to some people who are involved in sex work yeah. now, who were and aren't some anymore and ask them why. Yeah. And do all of that before Ask you're them just how like, they get treated. I guess. Ugh. I mean, the skin color makes a big difference with some of these men. They want you to be mm-hmm. light enough to where you can pretend to be something else. And or all dark that. enough so that you can pretend to be something else. Uh, if you know what I'm saying. Or do some kind of nasty, <clears throat> like, slave master mm, fantasy shit. That's what I'm talking shit. about. See? Uh-uh. Or, like, some, some daddy stepdaughter. You never know what kind of freaky, nasty shit they'll ask you to get into, girl. Mm-mm. I wouldn't, but make the choice that's best for you. But, yeah, think a lot about it and do a lot of your own research before you make a decision. So, best of luck to you. Send your questions to asktheread at gmail.com, and we'll be back. Hey guys, support for this week's episode is coming from Stamps.com. It's time to skip the hassle of the post office with Stamps.com. From postcards to envelopes to packages, domestic and international, Stamps.com lets you buy and print official U.S. postage for any letter, any package, any class of mail using your own computer and printer. That's it. You just click print mail and you're finished. You don't have to stand in a bunch of lines at the post office. You don't have to be at wit's end worried about whether or not you're going to bust somebody in their face at the post office and go to jail. (laughs) You can take care of everything at home, print postage for letters or packages at your convenience 24-7. And they'll even send you a digital scale that automatically calculates exact postage and helps you decide the best class of mail based on your needs. You even get discounts you can never get at the post office. Stamps.com brings all the services of the U.S. Postal Service right to your fingertips. Yes, when I find cute little black dolls and other stuff in the city that I know my cousins can't get elsewhere, I love to just take care of the shipping and postage right there at home, and that way I can go to the post office and drop it off and avoid all that mess there at the desk. You too can enjoy the Stamps.com service with a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus postage and a digital scale without long-term commitments. Just go to Stamps.com, click on the mic at the top of the homepage, and type in READ. That's Stamps.com, offer code READ. Never go to the post office again with Stamps.com and the READ. Now let's wrap up the show. We are back, and it is time for the read. It is. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, so there's been a lot of natural disasters going on around the world lately. Uh, Most of them attributed to climate change, which scientists have been warning us about, I mean, all my life. I don't, like, since I've been here. Even though Republicans steady insist that this is not a thing and Trump is, like, you know, trying to dissolve the EPA or whatever. It's fine. No. Environment. 
what is that? Who cares? It doesn't yeah. matter. What? No, the earth is clearly like throwing up on us, but it's fine. I'm about to go off on a tangent. And this is about something else. So the hurricane in Houston over the weekend, I knew about it coming because I have so much family there and, you know, everybody is preparing as much as possible, trying to get food and water and all this. But nothing, nothing. I don't think anything really prepares you for something of that magnitude. Yeah, I think no. 30 plus inches of rain all over Houston. I mean, I'm getting pictures and videos from family where like whole streets are just they look like rivers. Yeah. It's just flooded. There's mm-hmm. just water everywhere. And it being so bad for a couple of days, like. I don't, like just people just didn't, it looked like it would never stop raining. So now that the sun has finally come out, the rain has stopped. Um, there's more uh, recovery and like, you know, rescue operations and stuff like that going on. People are looking, you know, towards rebuilding and moving on. But the, the damage is here and the damage is going to continue to happen. Like flood water ain't nothing to fuck around with. Nope. Water damage ain't no hoe. Nope. Mold is certainly not no bitch nope. to fuck around about. A whole lot of people, the vast majority of people, don't have flood insurance. And then because insurance companies are so damn garbage, what constitutes flood damage versus water damage can be a thing. And so even if you do have flood insurance, you still about to go back and forth with them people for weeks behind your money. It's just a lot of stress and shit going on in Houston. So there's been lots of efforts from people around the country and even around the world for like fundraising, sending the sort of things, supplies, clothes, food that are needed down there. And all of that is really great. But one of the big stories that has come out of Houston over the past few days has been that of Joel Osteen, who all my, or at least all, as long as I've known, I call him Joel Osteen because I feel like that's just how every black person says it. But Joel Osteen, who is the pastor, (laughs) I don't know, head motivational speaker at yeah. Lakewood Church in heavy quotations in Houston, which is a huge building, like can seat almost 17,000 people. So, you know, easily yeah. arena sized yes. church came under a lot of criticism because people were like, why is Lakewood sitting empty when so many people could be using it as a shelter from the hurricane? And so, again, going off people going off of the reports from people I know who are actually in Houston And not just, you know, randoms on the Internet asking questions. A lot of people said, well, the streets around there are flooded. We don't know if the building is, but it's impossible. Bitch, you can't go outside. Like, if you don't live within walking distance of that church, you're probably not going to make it to that church and all this other stuff. And I'm still like, you know what? It's fucking raining outside. I'm not trying to point fingers at anybody at this point. I'm not trying to say, you know, you do this and celebrity open your pockets and Beyonce and Instagram posts is not enough, bitch. Where's your check? And right. All, I'm not doing all that right now. People are fucking dying. There is a two-year-old, there was a some toddler baby mm-hmm. who was found holding on to her mama who I had drowned in a yes. tunnel. And just knowing that that woman laid there and died, knowing that she was gonna die and probably was just like, just hold on to mama, like, just hold on and you'll be okay. Like the thought of that alone is enough for me not to really give a shit about all the extra. Right. So I left Joel Osteen alone. I let Facebook have those arguments by themselves because I was just like, I'm not jumping oh, into it at Facebook. this point. Oh, isn't it adorable? <laughs> I li- I mean, and it's, it's really great for moments like these when stuff happens that, you know, the middle of America really cares about. Cause let me tell you something, Oklahomans, give a, a very big fuck about Joel Osteen. And so that whole region, you know, it's it's huge. It's a, There's a reason why he has that big-ass church in Houston. Like, he's very fucking popular. So people are really divided about this whole thing. And I was going to stay out of it until yesterday, today, whenever the news came out, Joel Osteen, I guess it got so bad from Twitter that he decided to start doing TV appearances on CNN and shit. And went on CNN talking about, well, there were safety concerns. You know, the church is prone to flooding and there was some water in the very lowest level of the church. And I'm thinking, well, nobody was going to be down there sleeping or anything anyway. Like, it's a big ass building. So I don't even know why you would say that. It's not like your your sanctuary was flooded. It's not like your kitchens were flooded. Right. It's not like you lost power or something like that. It wasn't like you... It didn't make sense for y'all to open the doors. You literally said, well, it was a bit of a safety issue, but mainly we didn't open the doors because the city didn't ask us to until yesterday. There's a shelter 
He said there's a shelter four miles, four miles away. away. He's like, there's a shelter like four miles away with dormitories and all that. So, you know, once that got full, then people started coming over here. But we were never closed. That's the thing. Our doors were never closed. There were people here the whole time. And it was never a thing where others couldn't come. Okay, girl, but this is a church, right? A church, a tax exempt building, a tax exempt organization where people come and donate their money to you. And you don't have to pay taxes on it. You can take all of it and use it as you see fit. And you have 50 million of those dollars. So it's not like you haven't been doing a good job, again, as the motivational speaker that you are. My problem with Joel Osteen is not necessarily his message. It's that he packages his message as a religious thing, as like, giving money to these charities or donating money to this church or doing the things we say means that God will reward you with prosperity. Meaning like if you don't do these things, then you deserve to be poor or God's blessings. People are rich. People are fortunate with money. People have monetary gifts and receive donations and all this sort of bullshit because they are servants of God. When, when nothing could be further from the truth, you could be the biggest Jesus lover your entire life and go to church six times a week. Like everybody's granny and live and die poor every day of your life. Yes. It has nothing to do with how good of a steward of God you are. And a lot of it has to do with where you were born into society, period. Period. If your parents are rich, you probably will be. If your parents are poor, you probably will be. That is across the fucking board. Most people don't cross those lines in their life of like wealth or anything like that. So it's that. And then it's also even if you were going to preach this prosperity gospel bullshit and you have all this money and you have this big old facility and all these people who work here and all this other stuff. You mean to tell me the city had to tell you? The mayor had to call you, Joel Osteen, and be like, hey, we know you have this big ass building with like lots of resources. Do you mind opening your doors and letting people come in? You are a fucking church. You, your job is to serve the community. Joel Osteen and every other big name preacher, million millionaire preacher in Houston should have been the first ones together talking about not even opening the buildings because, yes, safety can be a concern for a lot of them. And, yeah, the highways were fucking flooded. So even if you could get out your house, you couldn't drive nowhere. But why weren't y'all getting together? You have time to tweet and Facebook everything else. Why wasn't there anything like we're getting together a group of men to go out to the Home Depot and buy every boat they have. And we're going out on search and rescue missions. So put your address here and we'll divide it up by zip code. And all. like, why wasn't there any coordinated public effort from the church to save as many people as possible? You are morally obligated to do that as the preacher as the head pastor as the person in charge of a church and not just some small local church but a massive church that makes so much money it doesn't make any sense when I know personally my cousin has a church in Houston when I can see pictures of regular people outside just in the best that they have picking up children picking up you know, somebody's grandparents out there in boats, just regular ass canoes that they have regular people outside helping each other, regardless of sexual orientation or race or religion or anything else. People just helping. If you have the resources and the reason you have those resources is because you run a tax exempt organization that is supposed to be helping the community, then you should have been the first bitch in line to open the doors and do whatever you had to do. You should have been pouring so much of your own personal money, maybe not even Lakewood's money, but your checking account should have seen some debits that day. It's the it's the least you can do. You have millions and you live in Texas and where Texas has no income tax. So even if you were paying taxes, you wouldn't have to pay income tax on that. Like you get to keep so much more of your money there and it goes so much further because the cost of living is so much lower. So there's no reason there is no fucking reason for Joel Osteen or any other fake ass prosperity preacher to have done anything other than the most in response to this situation. It should have been the absolute most people who have nothing were outside risking their lives. Police officers who I never cape for outside risking their lives, dying. And you are sitting up in this big ass mansion twiddling your thumbs like, I guess we'll wait for the city to say that they need some help. Nigga, the city has to say that Houston has been on the news for four fucking days. We ain't seen nothing but footage of people like help us, please. 
I personally have gotten so many tweets from people like, my family is at this address. Can somebody please help us in Port Arthur? Can somebody help us in Beaumont? Can somebody, like, it's not even just Houston. Like, all, you have so much and you claim to be a man of God. So how come what you did was the exact opposite of a godly thing? How come it was the exact opposite of what Jesus would have done? You mean to tell me the government, the city government had to tell you that they needed help and you should have done it? It wasn't enough for you to, I don't know, peek outdoors and take a look at all the fucking damage and say, hey, I have a big building with massive kitchens and we could set up, you know, blankets and cots and we could feed people or I have a massive home. I have areas that people could stay in or If you didn't want to be that generous, at least take your money and pour it into the community, pour it into the rescue efforts. It's the bare minimum you could do. And I'm just so tired. Like, it's honestly garbage that the the main criticism or the main response to this argument that I've seen is, well, I don't see anybody else opening their doors. I don't see y'all love to go to the club and give the club two hundred dollars of your money every week. So why don't you go to the club and ask them to open up and y'all can take refuge there. Bitch, you sound really fucking stupid. <laughs> y'all sound dumb. First of all, that club pays taxes. <laughs> Secondly, whoever thinks you know where I should evacuate well, I mean maybe a bar, honestly. I would. Gotta be the, the liquor alone. That's just a good reason. Yeah. But hell, the church got wine. And still, like, that is the church's job, though. The club ain't never been the place to go for the food pantry or because you need school supplies or because you need the clothing drive or whatever. The, the church is there for that. It's and no, you, you go don't. Before you go to that place. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, the church is set up. It, they are supposed to help the community. We are called by God as Christians to help our fellow man, regardless of whether they believe in the God that we believe in or not. It is our duty to help our brothers, our fellow man, regardless. And just it astounds me the the links niggas have gone to to defend this shit. But the fact that he just sat there, the fact that he just sat there while 10, 11 people so far have drowned. And if he, you know, if he posts receipts from, I don't know, boats are us or whatever. And it's like, I did all this and I went to Walmart and bought out all the pantries and this, then that would be one thing. But I have a feeling if somebody had to tell you to open the damn church, they probably had to tell you to open your damn wallet. So fuck Joel Osteen for that entire response to this situation. And anybody who has a problem with it could kiss my ass. I don't understand y'all's deep attachment to this nigga. Like, I understand that you love him, but nobody's above critique. And people are fucking dying. People are dying. And when the water is finally gone and people are upside down because they've missed work and so they check the light, the daycare center where their kids go has been had too much mold and so it's not safe for them to go anymore. Like, it's a million more problems to come. And so I hope Joel Osteen and everybody else like him is learning from their mistakes and deciding to turn around and do something better. But it's a fucking shame that the government had to make you do it in order for you to do it. And insinuating or even outright saying that people should be Christians in order to get help from the church, like... Like what, there's some kind of Jesus ID card that you show to get in to like prove that you've been baptized or whatever. And right. if you are of a, of a different faith, then you're just fucked. People, there are all kinds of religious buildings, mosques and synagogues that open their doors and lots and lots of small churches. It's not like nobody else was doing it. It's like everybody was doing it but these niggas. He drew attention to himself anyway, talking about it like, oh, our thoughts and prayers are with you, Houston. Bitch, you in Houston. What you mean? Do something. You got the fucking money. You have the money, the access, the privilege, the power, the location. Do something. Stop being a bitch. All right. That's it. I'm done. Well, I don't really have a read this week. Um, That's what you always say. And then anger. So this is what I'll do. I'll just drop a few points. First thing, uh, Stacey Dash. Nope. Like. (laughs) Nope. Sweetheart, why don't you just fuck off? Like, why don't you just go away forever? Uh, BT, I guess, posted a a tweet uh, that was like a recap of the moment where Maxine Waters gave a speech after she received an award at Black Girls Rock, which Mm. is probably the only award show that's like worth watching. Yeah. Yeah. For real. (laughs) Period. For real. And there was so many gems in this last one. A lot of great advice. 
So Stacey Dash retweets uh, this article and says, this is how you spin a corporate media buffoon sucking up her late in life 15 minutes. Of course, everybody dragged her by her fucking end table looking face. Okay, because what you from won't do. From one end to the next end. Uh, and later, she, a few hours she tweets, let me clarify that an intern wrongly used buffoon in a recent tweet on Maxine Waters. I don't need to be disrespectful to disagree. So, few questions. <laughs> First question. <laughs> what do you have an intern for, bitch? You don't do anything. What, what is what is your intern? What is one supposed to learn from Stacey Dash? Like, what do you do? Where do you go back and get credits for for that? Like, Stacey Dash, you're unemployed. What are, what are you... Mm-mm. You have an intern for it. Nobody believes it. You need way, way, way more people. And you don't have to be disrespectful to disagree. You've been disrespectful and disagreeing many times. Like, many times. I don't know what you're talking about. Just please go away and buff out them frown lines or whatever it is that you should be using your time to do. Past that. Um, I know she don't think she could have just came from Maxine Waters, though. She knew what she was doing. She, she absolutely knew. did. She knew. You were better off just staying the fuck off of the internet rather than coming on here and lying to us, girl. Nobody fucking believes you. Oh, the little and Republican even shit's if, not working anymore. <laughs> even if you did have some intern that's really, really dizzy, um, who tweeted that bullshit? It's still fuck you and the intern. Like, no, <laughs> you can still go to hell. What did you think? Right. Um, I want to say to many of you out there that the time that you spend pretending to be the person that you think you should be, you could actually use to become that person. <laughs> A lot of y'all are wearing costumes of niggas that you think. Uh, are really really lit you're wearing like costumes of super popular instagram folks or you're wearing the costume of like ballers and shot callers but you don't want to put any work in to actually ball or shot call Mm -hmm. that confuses me i think that it's illogical now working you know most people don't like it you know and even if you have a job or you work somewhere or on something that you genuinely love i'm sure you can ask anybody that they have many days where they don't want, they just want to get up out of their bed, use the restroom and get right back in it. Like I'm sure there are plenty of days yeah. Beyonce or Shonda Rhimes or anybody who's just exercising their craft is like, you know what I don't want to do today tour. You know what I don't want to do today? Write, you know, a number one TV show, right. most watched bad bitch ratings. Like I don't feel like it today. You know how many times Daenerys is probably like, I don't feel like fucking flying a dragon. I don't. I'm tired of them. They breath stink. They spiky as hell. There's nothing to wear. Like, I just don't feel like doing it. So, yes, working can be hard, especially if you work hard. (laughs) But working hard also usually turns out results. And then you can be that fly, ball, and shot calling ass nigga in real life instead of lying and then having to deal with the fact that people who actually know you know better and oh, you look shit. stupid. This is spicy. Um, This is common, though. Niggas love to perpetrate. This is everywhere. Yeah, you know no, what I'm this saying? Is this is all over the internet and in real life. I'm just so confused. Like, when are you actually going to work? When are you actually going right. to try to do something? Or, or, you know, when are you just going to, to be you? Like, instead of fronting like you're somebody else, fronting like you have this and that, like, why can't you just be who you are with whatever you lack and just be on your journey, on your way? Like, why can't you just work for the things that you're fronting for? I saw a quote not too long ago. I don't remember which social media app location it was, but it said something like, I'm not going to go broke trying to look like I'm not going to go broke trying to prove I'm not broke to broke people. It sounds like an Instagram quote. Definitely had to be Instagram, right? Sounds like a... It must yeah. have been the live or the story or whatever, whatever you call that shit. That's what I'm saying. Like, stop trying to pretend that you are more than you are to impress people that don't know you or don't care about you. Like, it's not that deep. 
That's what I think what yeah. Jay-Z was saying about the money phone. It's not that, <laughs> you know, that's not real money. I mean, not to him, but yeah. Not you know, real money. It's just like, sweetie. Who does that? Who cares? Right. You know, like, yeah. there are much, much, much richer, flyer, more powerful people than you in the world. And they're not doing all of that extra. Yeah. Not like, obviously, have fun. Do you enjoy your life and your youth or lack thereof? Whatever. But. But you will never be able to outflow somebody who really has it. And that's why fronting is pointless. And the people who really have it for real and treasure it and are about that action and that work. Right. Usually are too busy to do all of that. If right. they're not actually working, they're figuring out what the next project they're about to be working on. They line in some other shit up. Like You know who this makes me think of? Bow Wow. <laughs> Remember how Bow Wow did that whole, oh, I'm on a private jet going off to promote growing up hip hop and you niggas not on my level. And then it turned out that he was lying. And yes. then I think about the times that I've seen Beyonce pose next to a private jet. And I think the difference is that Beyonce really does that. Like, Beyonce is never flying. I've never checked in for my Delta flight and seen Beyonce just chilling up in business class or whatever. Like, that bitch really flies private all the time and has the money and the career to back it up. So people who really do it, again, you will never be able to out them because they do it so casually, it's nothing. You look at a picture of Beyonce next to the plane and you forget to look at the plane. It's, it's, it's that simple. I just, I hope y'all know that there are no payment options set up behind my likes. Oops, like, I don't have a credit that. card attached to the like button Put on that any on a of shirt. these applications. <laughs> so, it don't matter how many likes that you get from me or any other person. Like, you don't get paid for that. Unless your caption says hashtag ad or sponsor. <laughs> and that still ain't got nothing to do with me. Right. I could scroll right by that shit and not even see it. So... Definitely pretending and doing all of this extra stuff and trying to have luxurious, sexy photos like my dog aren't going <laughs> to do much for you. But, you know, like you still gonna have to go back to your actual bed if you have one and yeah, get in yeah. it and get right back up and go to your job if you have one and do that. Because right, much like myself and everyone else who's renting anyway, they gonna say to you on the first where is it? Huh. They don't care huh. about how many pictures you do, you done took. They don't care about your life. They don't care about you, what you're working on. Work on giving me my goddamn rent money. <laughs> I mean, and work on having it by the 5th, or you could work on my late fee. Period. That's it. Or you could just not stay here no more. It's up to you. That's all them niggas care about. So you devoting lots of energy and time into making the internet think one thing about you when real life is something else. Like... The only person you're really going to play is yourself, period. To a bunch of people who don't really know you and only are yes. talking about you to have something to talk about. And as soon as the next thing comes along, they're going to be talking about that person. That's that's literally it. It's all fleeting and trash. I don't know why y'all chase other people's approval or comments or anything else. I don't get it. It's all fake. So let that go. Last but not least, I would just like to read myself. <clears throat> Oh, is that so? Um, I have a, I don't even want to say, I have a habit of placing myself in a shell when I'm upset about things. Um, a shell of silence, but the silence is not quiet at all. So this is the thing. When I'm angry or annoyed or whatever, and I'm just in a don't fuck with me mood, I just, I'm quiet. I don't say anything. But it's very, very obvious and clear that I'm mad or I feel some kind of way. Now, I, the reading myself is something took place recently for me. It was actually a good uh, moment because I was upset and I was in my feelings about stuff. And I was around people I care about. And that attitude affects everybody. And it's not my intention to because I really wasn't mad at anybody I was upset about unrelated shit but then everybody realizes that I am and because you know these people care about me they'll be wondering like well what is going on with this nigga what can I do to help can I do anything to help should I leave this nigga alone 
And my whole thing is, like, everybody really can't just shut the fuck up and stop looking over here. So, like, I don't even know okay. why y'all are so worried about what the fuck I'm doing or me being quiet. Because we're Bitch, your friends. Like, can I just shut up? Is silence that? Ju- is it that painful? My quiet? What is the problem? So I've learned now what I did in that situation was I took myself out of it. And I addressed it with everyone and I let everybody know what I was going, what was going on with me. And I said that I have to be more vocal in moments like that about what's going through my head. That way, everybody is on the same page. Everybody knows what it is and everybody knows whether they need to leave me alone or if I need a Snickers or if I need a joint or a shot or a nigga or whatever. The rare moment you want to talk about it. The very rare moment. And it was like walking on like broken shards of Taylor Swift CDs. It was like 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 doing the hit them folks on glass. It was so hard for me to just get out of my funk and be like, all right, y'all. This is why I'm tripping. And I just don't want to wait like I want to be able to be in the situation and be in my feelings at that point and not be stewing so like so hard that everybody around is like what is wrong with this nigga and I've just shut everyone out and then it becomes awkward and then nobody's having fun and then people are mad and the blah 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 and my intention is none of this like typically if I'm pissed at you you will know that I am pissed at you right because I will make certain of it Otherwise, I probably just want to be left the fuck alone. Or maybe I need to eat. <laughs> I'm very cranky when I'm hungry. That's real. Niggas just shut down when they hungry. When I'm hungry, I just, I see red. So, I am just on a continued journey to do better and be better. And something I learned is that bitch sitting and pouting ain't gonna do shit for you or nobody else. Look, 29 years, I've been doing it quite often. Yeah, it's sure. worked for me up until this point. <laughs> okay. And usually, nobody really fucks with me. Everybody usually, you, I got an extra M&M if you want one. And then I'm like, Arf! and then just stop. You know, like. Oh, God, it's true. <laughs> so. We be like tiptoeing around you like, are you okay? Do you want a friend? No? Want to just. And then I get aggravated. Okay. Because now I want to have fun and everybody's missing or like, like now what's the problem? It's like, bitch, well. We didn't know what was wrong. You were breathing fire and (laughs) nobody wanted to get burned, bitch. Like, so they left. Um, Oh, man. So I'm just, that is something like I'm trying to shed about myself. And it is hard. It sucks. But I think that I'll be better in the future for it, for learning, for that progression. And I can't promise that I'm always going to be great at it. But it's just something I've learned about myself. And I think that handling things better this time, although it was difficult, I felt really good about it at the end. And I felt like I learned a lot. And the conversation that I had was healthy. And so that is my read to me, girl. Do better. Fix your attitude from time to time. Now, that is with friends. That ain't just any old bitch off the street. A couple of y'all can still get cussed out. Oh, Lord. I'm talking about people that I am around. But I know the difference between your I'm just being quiet because I like silence and I'm being quiet because I'm in a shitty mood and very angry and don't talk to me. Like, I feel like I can tell the difference between those in you. Yeah. But I'm still more careful because it's just like, I don't want... Whatever you're mad about, I don't want to feel that. Yeah. Like, I don't want you to turn that on me, like, being mad at me for, like, tiptoeing over to you and trying yes. to see if you're okay. So, it's more of a, you okay? No. You want to talk? No. Okay. I'm going to be, you know, over here if you change your mind. And but that's pretty much it. For many people who've known me for years, at this point, it's just kind of like, oh, there she is. All right, everybody be quiet. (laughs) Like, now it's just like, the girls just know, odds are, if I say anything to him when his face looks like that, if I say, you okay, girl, she's going to say no. No. Right. It's true. 
anything I could do for you, sis, you can leave me the fuck alone. <sighs> cool, girl. Well, I'm going to be over here then. Like, <laughs> yeah. after her knowing me for so long, it's just like, there goes that face. There he go mm-hmm. frowning. All right, shut up, bitch. Don't even look over there because they'll flip this whole van over. Like, Right, but people who don't know you like that, usually think that you're mad at them and just don't want to say it. Like you have an attitude being in their presence. And it's almost not. So then it's just kind of like trying to run damage control with them. Like, no, he doesn't hate you. He just hates everybody. Like everyone, (laughs) everything, (laughs) like everything. But I'm proud of you, friend. That's a, that's a, a big growth, a big step for you. So being kind, I said on the show the other day, uh, be like a, a nice person. It's not hard and it's free. I take it back. It's really hard. No, it is. It's very, very difficult to be a nice person. Um, but that shows you showing consideration for other people's feelings and, you know, what they're going through. And- there's way more power and growth in being a nice person than being a dick. Being an asshole is actually really easy and fun. But... But you stay a shitty person if you are never anything but an asshole. If you're nothing but an asshole, if you're always a shitty person, you're probably going to have shitty circumstances, a shitty life. (laughs) At some point, you have to do the work into, like, being better. Unless you're Caucasian and heterosexual and cisgender, so. Yeah, no, because then the world is yours. But I'm proud of you. Very proud One of One day at you. a time. So so that's this episode of The Read. All right. Make sure you check out our website, thisistheread.com, and follow us on all the socials at This Is The Read. We have a tour coming up starting in, well, tour is lofty. It's a few dates. I don't know why. These this is Alex's fault. Yeah. <laughs> Alex does that. But our show in Atlanta on September 30th has sold out. Thank you so much, Atlanta. That was fast. So yeah, it was. For all the other cities that we will be to in October through December, check out thereadlive.com for tickets and dates and all that. Kifiri, I know you had your 305 Live in L.A. Yeah, I already mentioned that. Thanks so much to everybody who came out. It's my favorite party so far that we've done, like, of all of them. I think in order of, uh, would it be litest or mo- most lit? It would be most lit. Most lit, definitely. Cool. So, in order, can't even say most to least, top three okay. lit parties. 305 Live L.A. is number one for me. Damn, really? It was just, it was literally a Miami ass. Like, it felt like... Probably because of the pool. A Trick Daddy video. Definitely. Yeah. And niggas were in it. I saw that. I said, wow, black girls in the fights. pool. Okay, okay. Trade had their shirts off. The actual straight niggas had their shirts off. Oh, and you had straight niggas. Yeah, you know, a couple of their oh. lady friends brought out, you know. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Yeah. That was, you know, most of the straight niggas who come to our events are there because With some girl friends. was like, so all you do is watch Sports Center, and I'll never say nothing to you. But the one time I want to do something for us together, you can't just come. Anyway, so thanks so much to y'all for coming out. Second would be um, Trilloween, D.C. Mm, mm, that mm, warehouse. I remember, yes. turned. And then probably the very first 305 Live. Okay. Well, I'm In terms sad of I missed parties. It, it sounds so fun. So Yes, it was great. Thanks so much again to everybody who came out. That was awesome. I think that that is just about it for us this week. Yeah, I can't think of anything else. Do we have an acronym this week? I'm feeling pretty confident since I got the movie quote two weeks in a row. So, here, flip. DTC... B.B. Donald Trump can beat balls. Can oh, I forgot a letter. I forgot a letter. Can D.T.C. Okay. S.B.B. Oh. Can suck big balls. Really? Winter chicken dinner. Oh, my God. We got... We'll see you next week, okay. folks. <laughs> Bye, <People>. y'all. <laughs> 